Hello friends, welcome to my channel, Vs Medicine Diaries. So in this video, we are going to discuss about hyponatremia, the causes of hyponatremia, the types of hyponatremia, and the management of different types of hyponatremia. Okay, so let's go to the topic without wasting any more time. So, what do you mean by hyponatremia? Hyponatremia is nothing but decreased sodium. Okay, decreased sodium means serum sodium is less than 135 millimole per liter. Okay, the unit is very important, millimole per liter. And now we can see the different types of uh, hyponatremia. Okay, hyponatremia, what are the different types? Okay, there are three types, hypervolemic hyponatremia, Hypovolemic hyponatremia and euvolemic hyponatremia. Okay, this is based on the volume status of the individual. Okay, volume status of the individual when this uh, when the uh, fluid volume is high. Okay, uh, then he said to be or he or she said to be hypervolemic. Okay, and if hyponatremia occurs there, then it is hypervolemic hyponatremia and so and so. Now let's go to the causes of each of these uh, hypovolemic, hypervolemic, and euvolemic hyponatremia. Okay, so causes of hyponatremia. First one, hypervolemic hyponatremia. It's of Four important causes, that is CKD, chronic kidney disease, then nephrotic syndrome, okay, these two are of kidneys, and the other one is of GIT, that is cirrhosis, and third, or uh, the fourth one is of the congestive cardiac failure, the cardiac cause, okay, so we have two renal causes, one a GA cause, and also one cardiovascular cause. And now, let's see the causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia, okay, what are the causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia? So, hypovolemic hyponatremia, it can be of two types, okay, non-renal causes as well as renal causes. So, what are the non-renal causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia, okay, non-renal causes, okay, non-renal causes, non-renal causes, first important cause is vomiting, and the second important cause is dehydration or di diarrhea, and the third important cause is the third space losses, okay, the third space losses, okay, third space losses, third space loss uh, means uh, usually uh, due to births, okay, births, then pancreatitis, rhabdomyolysis, etc. Okay, so these are the non-renal causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Now let's see the renal causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Okay, the renal causes. Renal causes include overuse of okay, overuse of diuretics. Okay, when we use diuretics more, okay, then it can cause renal cause and uh, it can be a renal cause for hypovolemic hyponatremia. And now next one, what is the other cause? Okay, what is the other important cause? Aldosterone deficiency or aldosterone insufficiency. Okay, aldosterone insufficiency. And another important cause is renal tubular acidosis. Not uh, rotary accident, it is renal tubular acidosis. And uh, there are other uh, important causes like acute tubular injuries, etc. Okay, so they are the renal causes. Now, okay, so these together make the hypovolemic hyponatremia. Now, let's see what are the causes of euvolemic hyponatremia. So, euvolemic hyponatremia. Euvolemic hyponatremia is due to mainly cortisol insufficiency. Okay, cortisol insufficiency. Okay, aldosterone insufficiency causes the Hypovolemic hyponatremia, while cortisol insufficiency causes euvolemic hyponatremia. And then we have another important cause, there is CR, okay? Syndrome of inappropriate secretion of antidiuretic hormone, okay? Syndrome of inappropriate secretion of ADH, okay? And we have the third cause, that is hypothyroidism, okay? Hypothyroidism also causes euvolemic hyponatremia, okay? So these are the uh, causes of hyponatremia, the types of hyponatremia, okay? Now let's go to the management of hyponatremia. How do we manage a patient who is coming with hyponatremia? First of all, we do the investigations, okay? First probable investigation, of course, serum sodium. We look at the serum sodium and if we look whether it is less than 135 millimole per liter. And then we have to uh, differentiate whether it is a true hyponatremia or else it is a pseudo hyponatremia. How do we check that? Okay, we just check the serum osmolarity. Okay, if serum osmolarity is also decreased, then it is true hyponatremia. Okay, while in pseudo hyponatremia, the serum osmolarity is usually increased. Okay, and uh, what happens? Okay, what is what are the causes of pseudo hyponatremia? Okay, or in what other ways we can diagnose pseudo hyponatremia? Okay. So these include, okay, uh, different causes include increased lipids, okay, increased proteins or hyperlipidemia, hyperproteinemia, okay, and also increased glucose, okay, and also it can be due to increased level of mannitol in blood, increased level of maltose in blood, increased level of glycine in blood, etc. Okay, so these you know, cause pseudo hyponatremia. Okay, the it is a, uh, the serum osmolarity will be either increased or it can be normal also. Okay, it can be normal also. Okay, so. When we differentiate uh, true hyponatremia or uh, from pseudo hyponatremia, then we have to check the urine osmolality. Okay, then we can check the urine osmolality. Then we can also check the urine sodium. Okay, so what does urine sodium helps us? Okay, if urine sodium is greater than 30 millimole per liter, okay, if urine sodium concentration is greater than 30 millimole per liter, then the hyponatremia is caused due to some renal causes. Okay, renal causes. While, especially in case of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Well, if it is less than 30 millimole per uh, liter, then it is non-renal causes of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Okay, it is usually relevant in terms of hypovolemic hyponatremia. Okay, so these are the major tests that we do. Okay, in addition, we do various other tests like uh, we, we can uh, do uh, serum urea, okay, etc. So next, we can go to the treatment of hyponatremia. Okay, so we have to first assess the volume status of the individual. 
and based on the volume status, okay, we are uh, prescribing the treatment, okay. So if he, the patient is hypervolemic, then what we will do, okay, we will give loop diaphragms, as example, Prusmary, okay. And if the patient is hypovolemic, what we will do, okay, we will give fluids, okay, we will give IV fluids, and that is, we will give NS, okay, normal saline. How much NS we will give, okay, it is nearly 5 liter per day, because we have to increase the sodium by, to about, okay, by about 8 milligram per liter, okay, we have to increase uh, the sodium by about 8 milligram per liter per 24 hours, okay, so it can be done only by giving 5 liters of normal saline, okay, and now, how do we treat an acute symptomatic hyponatremia who is uh, present uh, within just 48 hours, okay? So, here's said to be acute symptomatic hyponatremia. Then, the treatment of choice is 3% NS, okay? So, if the patient is hypervolemic, we will give loop If the patient is hypervolemic, we give fluids. And if the patient is symptomatic and is present in a hyponatremia, especially euvolemic hyponatremia, okay? Especially euvolemic hyponatremia, then we will give 3% normal saline, okay? 3% normal saline or hypertonic normal saline. Okay, and the prescription is in such a way that we give, okay, it is available, okay, the 3% NS is coming as 100 ml bottles, so we give 100 ml, 3% NS, thrice, okay, it is given thrice, and it is given over, okay, each uh, dose is given over 10 minutes, okay, that is one pre um, uh, prescription, and other prescription, according to our Davidson, is 150 ml initially, as bolus, and then repeated thrice, okay, then repeated thrice, Okay, usually as 100 ml or 150 ml itself. Okay, so this is the treatment for acute symptomatic hyponatremia or when a patient is coming with symptoms of hyponatremia within 48 hours. So what are the symptoms of hyponatremia? It's usually GI symptoms like cramps, vomiting. Okay, the patient can also come as neurological symptoms with neurological symptoms like uh, ataxia or decreased concentration or uh, conscious uh, decreased con level of consciousness or any drowsiness or and also when there is increased intracranial pressure, he can come with seizures or any other uh, weaknesses, etc. Okay, so this is the uh, treatment for acute symptomatic hyponatremia and the same is the treatment for any cases of symptomatic hyponatremia okay even if the patient comes after 48 hours we give this 3% NS okay and also since it is if it is a U volumic case okay if it is a U volumic case then we give fluid restriction also okay we give fluid restriction also okay and the fluid restriction is usually 600 to 1000 ml per day okay and if the patient comes with uh, chronic or asymptomatic hyponatremia, okay, if the patient has no symptoms and if the patient presents after 48 hours, okay, or if the patient presents after 48 hours with mild symptoms, okay, mild symptoms, then we give water restriction only, okay, we give water restriction only and if we need, we can give drugs like Vaptins, okay, toll Vaptins, okay, we can give toll Vaptins, okay, so next the question comes or an important additional point comes, okay, that is why do we not give NS or 3% NS in chronic asymptomatic cases or when it is greater than 48 hours and when there is no symptoms. The answer is that, okay, after 48 hours, after 48 hours, usually the brain compensates by itself, okay, the brain compensates by itself, okay, brain compensates means, suppose this is the brain, okay, and this is the blood, okay, this is the blood, okay, so what happens here, okay, when there is um, uh, hyponatremia, when there is hyponatremia, okay, sodium is less here, so brain starts giving electrolytes, okay, brain starts giving electrolytes to the blood, and as a result, uh, the uh, sodium level or the uh, sodium level in the blood increases and the sodium level in the or uh, the mineral level in the brain decreases. So what happens? Water also follows. Okay, water also follows to the um, blood. Okay, from brain to the blood. So what happens uh, for the brain cells? Okay, it's actually the brain cells. Okay, not uh, actually the brain, the brain cells. So what happens in the brain cells? Okay, shrinkage of brain cells occurs. Okay, in order to accumulate the extra ex uh, uh, blood vessels. Okay, in order to accumulate the blood. Okay, so it undergoes shrinkage. Okay, then undergoes shrinkage. So what happens if we give additional NS also? Okay, if we give additional NS also, okay, three, if we give additional 3% NS into the blood, again, there will be a very much fluid shift from brain to the blood. Okay, so it causes further shrinkage and this is actually dangerous to the brain. Okay. So that's why we are not giving 3% NS in cases when uh, the patient presents after 48 hours and with less or no symptoms okay so that's a major point okay in all the cases we will do uh, we will give uh, either flu okay if, if the patient presents less than 48 hours and if uh, he has no symptoms means we can just give fluid restriction at home okay and if the, uh, the patient has symptoms then we give three percentage normal saline okay so that's so that's all about hyponatremia i have tried to present this concept uh, uh, very clearly and crisply to you and uh, if there are any suggestions please tell me and please do support my channel let's have a positive mind positive vibes and positive life Keep smiling, live happy. Thank you.